Hello everyone, welcome back to one of my videos. Today we shall raise another species of moth together and it's going to be a Citeronia aroa. Turns out somebody mailed me some eggs and I'm eager to start. These tiny yellow things right here are the eggs of the moth we are going to raise in captivity today. In a few days time the eggs turn dark and the caterpillars are soon ready to hatch. There they are! Teeny tiny little moth babies. After they hatch, I slowly transfer the tiny little Citeronia babies to another container with food. Caterpillars of Citeronia species are characterized by their horns. The plants they prefer varies a bit per species, but these dudes love privet or lichusten, prunus or cherry, and rus or sumac. And last but not least, they like liquid umber or the sweet gum tree. This is the tree I decided to use this time because it was in season with fresh leaves. In my opinion, Citeronia species are rather easy to raise in captivity. And here is the second instar. Wow, that's pretty awesome. This species develops some interesting striped piano. These caterpillars always have such interesting colors and forms, which explains why I love to study Citeronia moths in captivity. Most species are also quite suitable for beginners. If this channel grows big someday, I would love to study them in the wild too, and not just in captivity. And here is instar number 3. Now the caterpillars look quite intimidating. What is interesting is that despite their bright colors and spines, these larvae are actually completely harmless and don't seem to be venomous as far as I know, and not poisonous either. So I wonder if they are just bluffing. Or maybe they are protected in a way I am unable to perceive. To a clueless amateur, and maybe to predators as well, I can imagine they actually look quite intimidating and potentially dangerous with, dangerous with these spines. And here is instar number 4. Now they are starting to grow rather big and impressive, with their typical yellow and black colors. Citeronia aurora is a moderate level elevation species in tropical forests in Venezuela, French Guiana, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Brazil, Guyana and potentially also Suriname. And before you know, the caterpillars were soon ready to shed their skins to the final instar. Can you guess what it's going to look like? Wow, that is insane! This is the final instar of Citeronia aurora. It looks pretty different from the brightly colored earlier instars, but it is no less impressive. What's really cool is their almost ice spot like spiracles. Overall, the larvae are rusty colored to chocolate brown and they get somewhat big, although not as big as other species of Citeronia, I guess. If I had to choose a favorite place in the world when it comes to nature, I would be inclined to choose South America. The diversity of amazing insects there is just mind blowing. The trick to raising Citeronia is to give them a lot of space, don't overcrowd, and keep them humid. 
Most species prefer humidity over being very dry. Most species also prefer to be warm and can grow quite fast if kept above 25 degrees Celsius, although room temperature also works for them. So these caterpillar zilla spend about two weeks time, or maybe a bit more, feeding. And with some patience, passion and love, finally they will do what any caterpillar is destined to do. Pupation. Here is a fresh pupa of Citeronia aurora, next to its empty skin. Pretty freaky how they cast it off their bodies, isn't it? The pupa of this moth tend to hatch between two to six months time. And there it is! The adult of Citeronia aurora, life cycle completed. Or is it? The adults are brown, greyish, with fiery orange patterns and they do not feed and only live for seven to ten days which is enough to reproduce and then die. The moths do have a short lifespan, unfortunately. Now currently you are looking at a variety of male specimens. Unfortunately, for some mysterious reason, my female pupa never hatched. So I only have footage of males. I wonder why this happened. Maybe just bad luck? I did have pupa of both genders. But because the females didn't hatch, I was not able to complete the life cycle of this moth, due to only having males for some reason. I hope that doesn't bother you and that you still did enjoy seeing me grow them from egg all the way to moths. Maybe next time we will be lucky enough to have males and females and complete the life cycle. Bye bye and don't forget to read the description under this video, which is important, and see you in my next uploads.